Start at the I'm camera. In, I'm in, I'm in. Start at the camera. We're doing it live. We're gonna do a whole episode right now. Here we go. You're in? We got matching t-shirts, baby. Let's go. I'm Ladrid. And I'm Alex Van And today we're talking about the five types of FPV drones that you should be thinking about as you're shopping this holiday season. Just a heads up. This list is gonna be the five different main types of FPV drones. It's not fully exhaustive. There's all sorts of different sorts of FPV drones. And as we go through them, we're gonna mention the ones that we have available in our store because that's how we support this channel. Of course, there are other options out there and you don't have to get the ones that we sell and we're not even saying that the ones that we have are the best. I mean, I think they're pretty good. It's the ones that we fly. And if you do want to support the channel, shopping with us helps us keep making videos like this. You can totally shop other options out there, but what we got and hopefully it helps more of you guys start flying because this is the best hobby ever. So Alex, take it away. First drone on our list is going to be a five inch drone. I mean, that's what we fly most of the time, right? We fly them for the show. You can put an action camera like a GoPro or a DJI Osmo camera on them. Typically, everyone who flies in this FPV community flies a five inch drone. Yeah, it's kind of like this staple. If you've seen any FPV video before, there's a good chance that it's a five inch drone. It's kind of like what this whole sport, hobby, community, whatever you want to call it, this lifestyle was built around because they're just so dang capable. When we think about these drones, there's different areas of flight performance, right? So you've got your freestyle, mm -hmm. you've got your racing. Those are the areas where these drones really shine. What about when it comes to flying indoors? Would you fly an, a five inch drone indoor? Not really. Like, you probably shouldn't. You bump into something, you're gonna mark up your wall, you're gonna break things, it's kind of dangerous. So what about cinematic? Can you use a five inch drone for getting those like super cinematic shots? Yeah, you can. I feel like a five inch drone has its limits. You can really only carry like a small HD camera like a GoPro or okay. a DJI Osmo, and you obviously can't fly as long. Well, our five inch drones really only fly for about two to five minutes, mm -hmm. where some other drones we're gonna talk about can fly a lot longer. But overall, it's still the staple of FPV. It's what we focus on. Since it's what we do most here, we've got a ton of options. My signature frame is the Skyliner. It's built to be super tough. Alex, you've got a signature frame yep. yourself? Yep, I have the CL1 VS, which stands for Vanny style, which is my style of flying. Both frames are great options. If you kind of like more traditional style five inch quad, you probably would like my frame. It's got you know top plate, bottom mm -hmm. plate for arms. Yours is a little bit more kind of tailored to your flying style. Right, if you don't know what you're looking for, our standard HD1 and CL1 platforms are like right in the middle of the road. They're true X, they're super durable. So you've just got a ton of options for the five inch frame and you really just can't go wrong. It's the staple of FPV yep. and you're gonna have a great time. All right, what's the next type of drone, Alex? Long range drones. That's where you wanna go? I wanna okay. go long range drones. And I feel like long range drones are not really talked about enough. I mean, there's but kind of this- what even is a long range drone? What makes a long range drone? Yeah, generally speaking, long range drones obviously fly longer, meaning they're more efficient. So a long range drone is usually bigger because we wanna swing a bigger propeller. That way it flies longer, you don't get that nimbleness or that you know small right. size of a five inch or maybe even the durability of a smaller quad but you have a big propeller it's more efficient more thrust which also means you can carry a bigger payload yeah so it's definitely all about that trade-off where the, those five inch drones are kind of in that sweet spot where the prop is small enough that it's very maneuverable and big enough that it can carry the weight and generate the thrust that you need. As you go past the five inch drone to like a seven inch size drone, that bigger prop disc is gonna actually allow for more efficient flight. You're gonna be sacrificing some of the maneuverability. It's not gonna be quite as acro, but you got longer flight times and you can generate more overall thrust. So you can carry a heavier battery, which then in turn gives you more flight time. It kind of right. builds on itself, or you can carry a heavier camera, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of the times in the filming stuff that I do personally is with a bigger drone, like seven inch propeller or even bigger sometimes mm -hmm. because we need to carry those cameras. So what type of cameras are you carrying on your seven inch? Red digital Komodos. On seven inch you're carrying a red camera? Yeah. That's nuts. Well, we fly what's called a, an X8. So instead of a normal quadcopter with four motors, we actually have motors on the underside as well. So it's okay. eight motors, but with seven inch propellers. And nice. it's pretty darn maneuverable. I've carried the GH5. I've carried a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. That sounds like Pretty crazy machine. We don't have anything quite that no. nutty here at Rotorat, but what we do have is the HD1 XR extended range. This drone is a great way to kind of get into the long yeah. range game, try it out. It's not the be all end all carrying a red Komodo, yeah. but you can still carry a GoPro with it and you can get much longer flight times, fly greater distances and, and see, you know, is long range something that you want to get into, right? For our next type of drone, we got to talk about micro drones. Micro drones are so awesome because 
They're a much more approachable way to get into all this. They're smaller, they're more affordable, there's less risk involved with flying them, and particularly in this time of year, a big advantage is that you can fly them indoors, right? So yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, everyone who knows micro drones has probably heard of a tiny whoop. It's probably, besides five inch, I would say the most common type of FPV drone in this industry. I mean, there's a mm -hmm. whole Facebook group with almost as many people, if not more, than people who fly five inch for right. just tiny whoops. I mean, these things fly a little 1S battery. They're super cheap. You can build them for like 70, 80 bucks, like a really premium one's maybe $100. And you can fly them around people. You're not gonna hurt yourself. You might get yeah. it stuck in your hair but they're overall super fun and a perfect drone to learn to fly FPV. Yeah, during the colder months, it's something that the drone community comes to call tiny whoop season. You're stuck inside, time to break out the tiny whoops and chase your dog around the house. And there's other types though, micro drones we haven't mentioned. There's things like the digital whoop. Which right, is that's what we have here at Rotor Riot. It's, it's a bit larger than the tiny whoop. It's actually got a two inch propeller. Mm -hmm. It's a bit heavier and that's because it's actually carrying a digital system. Yeah. So it's not quite as carefree as a mm -hmm. tiny whoop, but you can totally fly it around your house safely, right? No, Absolutely, I mean, it's great. If you have the digital goggles, say, for flying a five-inch drone mm -hmm. or something like that, it's really awesome. You can fly it indoors. There's a little bit more weight. You may not want to get hit by it, but you can fly it inside, outside, if you have a nice, you know, little backyard or something like that. It's actually a really, really fun drone to fly. It's a great thing to have in your arsenal as well. And a big element of these micro drones that we're talking about are the fact that they have ducks or some other form of prop guard, and that's what makes them just so friendly for inside. We've definitely seen micro drones that had unshrouded props, but mm -hmm. they just never became quite as popular because having like a tiny whoop or a digi whoop where the props have like a bumper just means that you can like straight up bump into a right. wall and just bounce off it without your prop yeah. stopping and knocking you out of the air. It just makes it way more safe and approachable for flying inside and around people and objects and stuff. So what about the fourth category? I would say we're gonna talk about cine whoops now because mm. that segue is right out of micro drones. Cine whoops are basically taking a lot of the good things about a micro drone mm -hmm. and mixing it with a five inch drone, yeah. right? No, absolutely. I mean, cine whoops are one of those things where you want to be able to fly around people, right? Mm -hmm. So we have those guards, but you don't want to fly around people with like a five inch or a seven inch But you want to be able to carry a camera, right? Exactly. So you need that payload. So that's kind of where the cine whoop falls in. You have basically the five inch components shrunk down with, you know, three inch propellers inside these ducted guards. You put a GoPro on top and boom, you can fly around people, get some really crazy shots. Really quick, when it comes to cine whoops, I have to shout out Benoit Finke. Mm -hmm. He's done some really cool choreography with some like karate people, <laughs> like it's an awesome clip. And I feel like in the FPV community, a lot of people who are getting into FPV for filming do like the cine whoops. Yeah, I gotta shout out Nurk. I always kind of think of Nurk as Mr. Cine Whoop himself. He's been supporting and working with Andy Shen of Shen Drones since the beginning and really helped make Cine whoops so popular. And actually, the Cine whoop that we carry here at Rotorat is based on the Shen Drone Squirt. So when you buy a Rotorat Cine whoop, you are getting a Shen Drone Squirt built up with the components that we here at Rotorat have picked out to give you guys the best possible performance for carrying a GoPro and getting those like crazy smooth through object yep. shots. And I feel like the final category is one that you may not expect. We kind of covered all the drone stuff, but mm -hmm. we haven't talked about one thing, and that's simulators. Right. May not have expected that to be number five, but simulators are absolutely something you should be considering shopping for when you're shopping for an FPV drone because they're way cheaper, mm -hmm. they're way safer, there's virtually no risk. Yeah, I was gonna say, you can, if you have never flown an FPV drone before, the best thing I always tell people is jump on a simulator. We really, really like liftoff. I personally like the Drone Racing League simulator. There's also the Lhasa drone that's out there. I mean, you have all these really great options for simulators and they fly with profiles mm -hmm. just like the drones we fly. And I think, in fact, if you go into liftoff, you can fly some of the Rotorad stuff, right? Yeah, so it, I know if you're thinking about getting into FPV drones yourself or if you're shopping for someone this holiday season and thinking about helping them get into FPV drones, I know you want to jump straight to one of the drones that we talked about today, the five inch freestyle mm -hmm. drone, the Cine Whoop, the long range cinematic beast, whatever. But at the end of the day, really consider a simulator as your first step. Buy a simulator and buy yourself a radio to fly that simulator with. A great option is the Fat Shark 101 radio. Mm -hmm. It's only $40 yep. and you can plug it right into your simulator. Our choice would be liftoff. That's like $20, right? So for $60, you're getting a very real FPV experience and building the skills that are going to translate as you get into FPV. I mean, if you just can't help yourself, I know I was kind of like that and I had to just go straight for it. Buy yourself a drone and get yourself a simulator and start 
on the sim. Ease your way yep. into it. Keep that drone on a shelf for maybe a couple of weeks. Yep. While you're playing your sim, look at it and be like, one day. Yep. Someday soon, I'm gonna get into it. I'll say this, you won't regret the $20 and some practice on the simulator because you're going to crash your five inch or mm -hmm. long range or whatever drone it is. Save yourself some money, get on the simulator. Honestly, I still, I fly simulators all the time. Yeah, no matter how long you've been flying, the simulator remains to be a great tool to build that muscle memory and get rapid practice because every time you crash, you just hit the R button and you reset and you're flying again. You're not walking down to the field and picking up maybe yeah. broken pieces. Or I mean, if you're really sure that you're gonna be into this, go ahead and buy the radio that you plan to use with your actual drone. So the DJI Digital FPV Remote, that works right with the simulator. So if you yep. got that, you could start playing in the simulator and then when you bought yourself an HD1, yep. a Skyline, or a Cinewhoop, or a Vanny style, whatever, that remote will bind up right to it. Yeah, right? There's almost every radio that's on the market. If it's a Spectrum, if it's an uh, FR Sky, if it's a Futaba, mm -hmm. almost everything works on the market and it's compatible with all the simulators and there's tons of resources on the web for you to be able to get it working. So guys, I hope this shed some light on the different types of FPV drones that are out there. If you're just kind of learning about this awesome lifestyle and you're seeing some of the videos and wonder how are they even yeah. doing that? What are they using? This kind of covers all the different things and all the different types of flying and different types of cinematic shots that you can get and the drones that we would choose to get those types of things. If you guys are interested in any of the drones that we talked about, including the simulators, be sure to check out the Rotorite store. Link is in the description. It really supports us. Yeah, again, we're not saying this is the only or best option. There's tons of options mm -hmm. out there and you can totally shop around and find something that maybe we don't have here. But when you do shop with us, it helps support our operation here in Orlando, Florida. It helps us keep making awesome videos like this. Absolutely, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, hit the bell. Don't forget. You gotta hit the bell for the bell. Is there something we missed? We? Maybe you've been in this, I don't know. Leave a comment down below. Let us know what maybe we should have thought of. I'm LaDriv. And I'm Alex Vanover. We'll see you next time on Rotorite. Happy holidays.